Hello everyone, my name is Kami and in today's video we're going to be touching base on a game that I've been wanting to play for a very 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 long time, that being Skyrim V. I know what you all are thinking, why the fuck are you playing this game now? Or this game is already outdated, you shouldn't play it, blah blah blah. No, I love this game and it's been at the back of my head for like the longest time. Now that I have time on my back and other things have been out the way, we could finally play this game. And um, as long as I pinpoint the audience and that I could attract the audience that I truly need, that being the Skyrim community, more than enough to ask for. So Skyrim audience, boom, need that. We're going to be starting a series. It's going to be consisting of me doing long gameplay of Skyrim V. So if any of you um, could help me out with the game, I'm not too you know familiar with the mechanics or the physics of the game. I played it once actually. Um, as you all can see, I'll be over here, somewhere over here. Um, it's when I first played the game. I'm pretty sure like 800 of you watched that video. For my viewers, um, you all know that I'm fucking dog shit. And YouTube's just being a piece of shit right now. Not allowing me to monetize some of my videos. Um, it's not letting me, you know, open comments. It's not allowing me to share my videos for some reason. Like, YouTube's just being weird in general. I don't know what the fuck Susan's up to. But I don't know what you have um, with me. I haven't done anything wrong. I put out beautiful content for you all. And uh, starting the Skyrim series is going to open many doors for me, hopefully. And uh, I just appreciate you all being here for me. It's more than enough to ask for. That being said, um, there's an iceberg. There is an iceberg um, that Skyrim has um, that I've been wanting to watch for a very long time. As a side rant, I played Skyrim and... It's so fucking realistic. It's actually absurd. I remember, I think I think my character got Salmonella. I'm pretty sure you all watched that. My character got Salmonella or something. I don't think I posted it. I think it was a live, but I put it private. I'm not sure, but in my first episode, um, I think I was eating like the wrong foods or I wasn't getting rest and my character wasn't running or some shit. And it aggravated me to a point where I just turned the game off because I just didn't know how to fucking play the game now that i know well now that i'm gonna be looking into it more hopefully you all could help me along with it um so we can finish the game so today we're not gonna be looking at the walkthrough we're not gonna be watching walkthroughs we're gonna be watching the the iceberg because i actually want to pinpoint all the tiers and how bad it could actually get so we could you know unravel things ourselves so let's get into the fucking video shall we Alrighty guys, watch the video! Elder Scrolls. It's one of the biggest names in gaming ever. But what if I told right. you that this universe was hiding a secret? That Shit. the lands of Oblivion, Skyrim, Morrowind, and many wow, more have cool. given birth to some of the most So this is the map, right? This is the map. Holy fuck! I'm not supposed to know what any of this shit means, but damn, I'm curious. Theory Wolf, Black Books. These names sound so cool, but I don't know. It could get dark. Mind-bending revelations you've never heard. Of. I just can't wait till all of you Bring watch my time. gameplay. It's gonna be long. Was that Jesus? It was Jesus. For those of you that okay, don't so know, an, an iceberg gotcha. is a deep dive into the strangest and most terrifying mysteries and conspiracies on any topic. Yeah, there you so go. today, you the let's plunge into the world of Elder <laughs> We all fucking know. One of my personal favorites in all of gaming, where the first tier will be the more playful and lighthearted theories. And as we make our way down the list, we will unravel the most disturbing secrets of all of the Elder Scrolls. Timid, but can become more enraged I don't see what's so wrong with this. It can prove to Why be more the tier? adversary. It's fucking irrelevant. They're more intelligent than some wildlife, but in general, they have no capacity for speech or communication with more advanced races. You no see, shit, though, it's a fucking what crab. actually makes the Dre so interesting isn't who they are now, but rather who they actually stemmed from in the past. Shit. Vivek, one of the three the main great gods of Morrowind, who we actually do okay. meet in the games, was okay. an astute historian and wrote many texts about the ancient world, so bustling and thriving that. cities. Wait, trade, so there's different writing, types of drays. And most importantly, is this a, a type of dray? And not just dominance over the Surely province it is, of Morrowind, because it's or even all of Tamriel for that matter, but rather all of Nur. 
Okay, that makes much more sense. Good thing Mondays, he mentioned that. Which is now we know Nern is basically the world, right? So Nern is the Earth, and then the as rest well is planets. As well as the divine realm, shown here in black, which is home to other planets that house divine. And wait, wait. So can we go on the planets outside of that? Or we is only the could red stay on Nern, where Oblivion and the Daedric Surely forces not. of Surely more not. demonic Surely. presence live, and all of this is part of an entire realm of existence called Ethereus. Which Shit. itself is a part of Arbus, the name of the, the entire void. galaxy that houses Aetherius like never and ending. the Void. The games as we know them take place on Nern, and you more specifically, that like eight one of the one of the most fascinating and thought-provoking mysteries in Elder Scrolls, and shows True. just how deep and well-designed the lore really is. And well, we're just getting started. There are a lot of less well-known enemies and Shit. entities scattered all throughout the worlds of each Elder Scrolls. Yeah, there's a lot Some of Some more enemies. terrifying than this what is, is the Reaper from Skyrim. It's an yeah. enemy that most players don't even know exists. It cool and can only be accessed within the Soul Cairn inside of what Castle Volcar from the Dawnguard DLC in any of the games. So it the Reaper is a giant shade with green Why glowing you want eyes that, that wields That's a massive book. battle axe. And upon fighting like him, it doesn't the slash you with this sight or anything, it's just barks on you. And spit giant green ass a Daedric heart, hey, suggesting yo. that he is some sort of Daedra monster. It literally barks on you, look. from the lands of hell, otherwise known as Oblivion in this universe. That's so fucking As stupid. to what exactly the Reaper is, it still remains unknown. Whether he is a tool of destruction from some powerful Daedric prince or a hellish primordial stew, something about this enemy is truly terrifying. Especially considering it is the only time we see a Reaper in game. Argonians are our Shit. favorite reptilian humanoid crossbreed in all of Tamriel. Hey, and they're yo. actually one of the fan favorite races you can hey, play in most yo. of the games. They usually come with special traits players can use, you like breathing underwater. Hit on the back, and can though. be a fun class to mix they up the back over head. of more rigid places. Oh, oh my god. Bro, her head would be crazy. What the? What the? Tongue with that, with that, with that lizard tongue. You see, reptilian yeah, creatures they're kind of in Reels and Black Marsh are well endowed. The best from the ancient history is just that the female Argonians are simply made this way, as we know from the ancient history stories. It doesn't matter. Argonians like it just doesn't fucking matter. Like it's not that deep. Like uh, no one so gives a fuck. Bre a brand new world. So we're still in tier one. But it would seem the similarities stop there. We didn't even hit tier two you yet. Play as a I thought. General. Who turns out I thought the, the Reaper was tier two. Oh my God! We have a lot to unravel. In Oblivion, you play as the hero of Kavash that saves an entire realm from being consumed by Oblivion's chaos. Is this is a white man. And in Skyrim, you play as this. <laughs> On paper, these seem like obviously different characters and people. After all, how could the Neverine and Dragonborn be the same people? However, this is where it gets interesting. You see, countless years ago, the world of Nirn was created by a divine god called Lorcan. This god deceived all his peers in the divine realm into pooling their resources to create Nirn, and this angered them very much. As punishment, he was killed by the other divines, led by Akatosh, that giant red dragon boy in Oblivion. His heart was thrust from his body and crashed into the area of Morrowind, creating the Red Mountain and he was forever a banished and lost soul. Wow. Still throughout all of history, many it races have told deep. stories of supposed Shezerines, which are believed to be mortal incarnations of the missing god, in the air. Lorcan. It's cool as so could it be that in every Elder Scrolls game, we are actually a Shezerine, a mortal amalgamation of Lorcan himself, on a mission no, to defend not. the you're realm a that he was player. responsible for creating in the first place? It would explain how we are always tasked with such important accomplishments and take the so reins is that like a of common important characters like, at are such you, vital like, moments Am I always going to be fighting these, lasting these bosses? It's also heavily implied or from is that many just like texts only in the once? game that this just might You could be a tiger? Yo. This is on the less well-known and scary I, I, I couldn't read what that said. That can radically change how you perceive its characters and world. This one I played right. as a kid, pick up my food. but also because it has many Turn into a mukbang and amazing Skyrim quest lines video. that truly dip into the Fuck scary it. and thrilling side of the series. One of these that many people don't know about tells the story of an alt or elf mage who has stolen Vamira's powerful orb. 
But Mira is the Daedric Prince of Nightmares. I'm gonna lose and my she is known for casting many souls into some of the most hellish places known to man. Shit. But in a twisted turn of fate, Vamira has not done this to our Altmer named Arkfed. Rather, he has stolen the orb from her himself. How does that for make any fucking reason, sense? And Arkfed has thrust himself so his nightmares. So he he wanted to take the orb from her that gives nightmares to implement to himself. How does that any how does that make any fucking sense? So you're you're basically giving yourself a nightmare. You're basically fucking yourself over. Bro. Into a twisted and demented nightmare. You are See, like he just fucking mentioned that. Like, are you retarded? Why the fuck would you want that? And so you do. And you are met with a desolate and dark landscape. One of, if not the scariest in the entire Elder Scrolls series. Full of weird and demented sounds. Small pathways leading to nothing. And a host of horrifying monsters in the dark. So as you make your way through the dungeon, you finally reach Arkfed's tower. And it is here you find his fateful letter. There is no world so great as the world of the mind. There is no uh, voyager so well traveled as the traveler in the land of dreams. There is no abyss so deep as the well of terrors that lies within each of us. Okay. I have plumbed its steps. Arkfed seemingly finds great joy living in his greatest nightmare. And falling man, he's some corny into ass shit, bro. Within his own. But get this, man, get my screen, bro. Who this man is, and more importantly, oh what he is up shit, to it's been a murder. To accomplish, could there be more than meets the eye here? Even after traveling into the depths of Arkfed's own mind, we still have so many questions left unanswered. Hey, yo, what Tamriel the fuck is home character? to a myriad of strange and interesting locations. Many you can make your character very little known about pretty them sick in this game. That's One what of I've the seen. most interesting of all of these locations, so Black Marsh mystery, is, is for like sure deep in the, game, the Black probably. Marsh, birthplace of the Argonians and Hist, located in the southeastern portion of Tamriel. It's a location we will assumedly visit in some faraway main entry Elder Scrolls game, but for now the region is simply spoken about briefly by some characters and in many lore books in the games. The Black Marsh consists mostly of overgrown vegetation and harsh swamplands with a variety of large and alien beasts that emerge from the waters. Shit. By all accounts, the Black Marsh is one of the least gentrified locations across the Tamrielic continent, with many roads being overgrown with fauna and wildlife, making it hard to even find your way between cities. And in these cities lies ruined and ancient architecture, with only rudimentary foundations for an economy and political system. The land is riddled with thieves and assassins hiding in the bushes, and simply traversing into the southmost portion of the marsh can prove deadly. However, one of the now most we know we're not going there. in the marsh, <laughs> the most mysterious and infamous figures in all of Tamriel. We were originally introduced to him in Oblivion as the leader of the. We're meeting him. Where he is we're meeting him, and we're going to record him as fat and like some that. fiction. We're going to meet him. Talk many to wanted him. letters spread throughout the Imperial City. And some news reports, Humbling. like this one, is a so-called Thieves Guild member masterminding all the thefts in the Imperial City? Captain Harmonious Lex of the Imperial Watch seems to think so. When asked about the Thieves Guild and its mythical leader, the Grey Fox, the captain was quite emphatic. This one man is responsible for all crime in the city. The energetic and tenacious Captain Lex. So if I kill him, it's a good thing because he's responsible of this many killings. Adamus so Philata, that only makes sense. Legion Spidey. Commander and Captain Lex, immediate superior, had the following response: "Ridiculous! The Gray Fox is but a fairy tale. There is no such thing as a thieves' guild, and there never has been." Stories of an unstoppable thief called the Gray Fox have been circulating around the Imperial City for centuries. The stories claim he can turn invisible at will shrink himself down to the size of a mouse, turn to mist and seep under locked doors, and perform any number of a truly creep, unbelievable then. feats. He's a weirdo. If even half of these stories are true, Man looks Captain through Lex locks. will have his hands full of capturing the Grey Fox. If the player decides to follow the Oblivion Thieves Guild to its completion, though, one of the best quest lines ever in Elder Scrolls, there's a big reveal at the end. The Grey Fox isn't actually just one person, but rather a large group of different people who have chosen to wear the cowl of the Grey Fox, okay, that's otherwise known as Nocturnal's Cowl. 
giving them the power of the Daedric Prince's control of the sphere of night and darkness. You see, millennia ago, the first Thieves' Guild leader ever actually managed to steal the cow from Nocturnal, and thus she cursed it to forever banish its wear, forcing all those who love and know them to forget about them forever. Even though the player is able to remove the curse from the cow in Oblivion, it still has horrifying ramifications for the past. My mind's cross-eyed. Who are these great thieves of history? And how do some people remember and tell stories of them? Could it be that the wares of the cow are nothing but figments of our imagination? And just how much of the Thieves' Guild past can we truly trust now? We may never truly know. Nocturnal is host to many great towers, whether it be the Red Tower at Morrowind's Volcano, or wait, wait, the do I get like a, Gold Tower, like a pet or like a horse like you do in like World of Warcraft or some shit? Of Cyrodiil, the centerpiece of the biggest city in Oblivion's mainline game. But perhaps the most interesting tower is actually the Adamantine Tower in High Rock, which is host to one of the most important lore events of all time. Also called the Zero Tower, the Adamantine Tower was built with perfectly smooth zero stones that made the walls glisten in the light. And it is the birthplace of what modern civilization is a good commentator. Convention. You see, in Elder Scrolls, Convention was a major event during the Dawn Era where Akatosh, after the betrayal from Lorcan, banished his heart to Morrowind, and along with this, devised the Edada, the original spirits that ruled over the new land of Nur. These Edada were called wow. gods and demons by the humans, and Adra and Daedra by the Aldmer, or elves. This adamantine tower was in many ways the birthplace of modern-day Nur. But wow. even... To this day, it houses many dark and interesting secrets. Deep within its walls yeah. lies a peculiar device I can see that. called the Argent Aperture, a giant ring of thirteen concentric circles, of which the meaning no a giant ring of thirteen. So we said thirteen, right? All right, let's count it: one, two, three, four, five. Uh, uh, uh. Right, twenty-three, twenty-four rings. You lied, bitch. I don't know what else you lied about. You could have been lying about the crabs in the beginning. You could have been lying about the uh, little tit lizard. You could have lying about this. Spreading false information, huh? It be a clock tracking the progression of each of the errors the world has progressed through so far. But some philosophers think that this device may actually be a riddle, which if unlocked, could be a doorway to an entirely new realm beyond our comprehension. A realm above the gods, the Daedra, and above life itself. And as one of the oldest, if not so, the oldest so, structures in all of Tamriel, the Adamantine Tower presents an amazing amount of So Daedra and Adra what might stay in that vicinity? The Argent Aperture that's housed inside. Whiterun is one of the most well-known cities in all of the Elder Scrolls series. And one of the first towns most Skyrim players will come across. What is hey, less well known, though, I've been here. is a small village on the very I've been outskirts here. I swear of I've been here. I've literally been here. A farming village referred to as Rorikstead. I've While been here. Most before. of Bright Run is known it's for probably its been in my game soil play. and bad weather. Rorikstead, or I think it's in a private video. Reason, I'm not too sure, but I've I've been here. Amazing soil. I think I played it on my own. The main supplier for crops I remember coming to the entire city. Rorikstead, yeah. But what on the surface seems to be a happy It's beautiful, it's calm, man. I don't see anything wrong about maybe it. Maybe hiding something much more sinister. First of all, the current leader of the whole, and who the village is named after, Rorik, claims that the Enclave has only existed for almost 30 years, and that he founded it after serving as a man in the army. But there just so happens to be three books in Skyrim that actually mention Rorik's day, and each of these references is well beyond 30 years old. One being from the second era 1,600 years ago, and another being well over 4,000. Is Rorik lying to us? Did he simply find the town barren and rename it after himself to act as if he was the leader and trick others? Or could he actually be some sort of demented being that has been here Yeah, he looks demented as fuck. It only has cross eye and everything, bro. You see, in the More town there's a young girl named Sissel. Don't, if you talk to don't her, she really mentions kids. how in her dreams she has been seeing a kind-hearted gray dragon, and she has foreseen oh. some kind of prophecy. You don't know about that this dragon, young lady. This sounds similar to the prophecy we envisioned from Parthenax, 
the hidden gray dragon, only the dragonborn and the graybeards know. So how would it be this innocent little girl has any idea about the coming conflict of the main story? If we follow her around for some it's time, it's her imagination. That she has Let a close her. relationship How the fuck is that sinister? Town named Joanne, who is the village healer and has taken a special. That's like saying to Sissel, and seeing some. That's like saying I dream about aliens, and the person I'm telling it to is like, "Oh, you're so sinister because they're real." I didn't know that. I was just thinking about it. It's fucking called imagination. You piece of shit. A sort of potential in her, and inviting her to his house often. On the surface, this could simply be a nice old man trying to teach a young child some useful skills. But hidden in Joanne's home, in one of his desks, is a very peculiar book. The Spirit of Daedra. Oh, a book shit! You see three times in all of Sky. Okay, that's fucked up. One of them. That's actually here. fucked up. The book is very rare, and it's a sacred Daedric and demonic presence. Uh, why does and he the have fact that? that Joanne even has it is especially Weird. terrifying. But it only gets worse. Because the town of Rorikstead has almost no woman. Hey, yo. Most of the men you talk to look at the fucking how their wives when you're digging. were lost. And that the village he Cut it out. Joanne Why the fuck is she looking at me like able that? To save them. Hey, yo. But Move. what if Joanne had not failed to do save something? Did look down in killing them? Maybe yeah, I thought the she could be a small and quaint <laughs> village. Like, that actually scares has me more than the dragon. I was busting. In the hut, we find a deceased man named Lund. Who has apparently uh, taken his life with told you I fucking told you I told you I told you he got salmonella and died because my character got salmonella and I kept on dying so his his cause of death was probably salmonella because he probably ate raw chicken he didn't cook it thoroughly and he fucking died it, it just only makes sense that's the only ethical explanation because yeah it's it's literally happened to me I've my character's gotten salmonella all right, and my screen and shit gets red. You all have been in that experience before when like where your screen gets red and shit, but my character got salmonella and he's dead and there's like rock chicken on the ground. I'm not sure if that's for the dog, but it's in it's in bowls, so it should be for humans. Um, not that dogs can't eat off bowls. I'm just saying it's, it's humans eat off bowls, right? It makes sense. So he probably got salmonella and died or... And next to his hut, we find a memorial of sorts, with flowers and candles, uh -huh. as well as hey, a, yo, there's a ring. ring, which seems to imply he is sought his end in sadness after losing his wife. That bitch is a bitch. Yet another female who has left us in a close bee. proximity to Rorikstead. And most damning of all, if you are able to actually clip the through the bounds in this hut, you are met with a mysterious and ominous green glowing mist in the abyss of nothing, except for one book, the Book of Daedra, suspended in mid-air in the area are no there? players are ever supposed to be able to get to. Could this be a clue only leaving their ruins for us to discover and study today? During their heyday, the Dwemer were a very non-confrontational race, who built massive cities and megastructures deep beneath the surface of Nern. They dwarfed all other civilizations on Tamriel from a technological standpoint, mainly due to their mastery of what is called tonal manipulation. They would construct Damn. massive acoustic contraptions, referred to as tonal <coughs> architecture, deep underground in large domes in, in like that were said systems. to have power to alter the That's very cool. reality of space-time itself. The structures That's cool produced sound waves that could terraform large cave systems, create holistic and powerful medicines, and by all accounts, even see into the future. It was the yeah, foundation from which the Dwemer found their power. Well, it's even in so modern day Tamriel, thousands uh, of years later, no race or civilization how do I get that armor? close to harnessing this power Sick as fuck. that the Dwemer had already achieved mastery of. This means that the ruins we stumble upon in many of the Elder Scrolls mainline games are much more advanced than even what we see in the great towns of our eras that we play in. These impressive accomplishments even led the Dwemer to reject a belief in the gods of Elder Scrolls, along with the Divines and Daedra. Not that Yo, they didn't the know they Spider existed. Fire. After all, gods and magic is very prevalent in Elder Scrolls. It would be impossible to reject they exist. However, yeah. the Dwemer didn't see them as that most rashes on them and shit. They instead saw them as equals. The Dwemer simply postulated that with further mastery of tonal manipulation, 
they too would have the powers that the gods held over them. Sadly though, this may have actually resulted in the Dwemer's ultimate downfall, and one of the most horrifying moments in the entire series. During their empire's reign, the Dwemer were in constant conflict with the Chimer, another powerful civilization Shit. of its time, and a large war was taking place in an area around Morrowind, and more specifically around Morrowind's great volcano, Red Mountain. Even with all the Dwemer's superior technology, they could not hold back the Chimer forces and their magics, assisted by the Divines and Daedra, who despised the Dwemer for their beliefs. After losing almost all of their foothold in the region and being pushed back to their base at Red Mountain, with their backs against the wall, a Dwemer leader named Kagernak did the unthinkable. Using the most advanced and sophisticated tonal manipulation techniques possible, he began to extract the heart of Lorcan, which was deep hidden within Red Mountain, the heart of the banished god who created Nern in the first place. And just as the heart was activated, in an instant, a flash of light overcame the entire region of Tamriel, and in that moment, all Dwemer disappeared. Right in the heat of battle, this entire civilization and their people were gone forever. Their weapons lay dormant on the ground. Damn. Their underground cities were now wide open and untouched, which is how we're able to see them today. So what Shit. exactly happened that fateful day at Red Mountain? What did like, the I'm pretty sure, as you all saw, like, I'm pretty invested. Lorcan? Like, this Had is, they finally found this is pretty deep. To transport into the it's realm pretty of fucked the gods, up. Finally fulfilling their prophecy of being on the same plane as them? The storyline is just they absurd. Gone too far? Had their own hubris damned their entire race to death, trying to mess with magics and powers they did not truly yet understand? It's a mystery even many Bethesda developers have spoken on, on many occasions, even Daddy Todd himself. But it's because of that we will purposely never get any definitive answers, most likely. The best proof we may have is actually a supposed surviving Dwemer named Yagram Bargan, who we meet in Morrowind, who does in fact tell us that he is the only remaining and surviving and writing and power of Adra or gods of the realm. The parchment of each scroll tells not only an account of the past, well, hence the reason why the game is called Elder pages, Scrolls, but also, and more haunting, I'm pretty sure you have to read a lot of scrolls throughout the game, the if I'm not mistaken. Strangely, though, these future prophecies are different for each individual who reads even the same scroll and seem to simply oh, be shit. a guess at what the future may hold. It begs the question could the Elder Scrolls be some sort of proof that this beloved series is actually taking place? in a multiverse, where an infinite amount of combinations and permutations make the linearity of time are not recorded, further implying that the universe is slowly <coughs> cascading into more and more infinite time breaks that yeah. the scrolls are trying to maintain. These are called dragon breaks after Akatosh, the god of time, and we know that the scrolls have significant power against dragons specifically, another indication of their power over time and reality itself. Wow. While the scrolls are rare and in many hard-to-reach locations, there are also many located in the imperial sanctum of the White Gold Tower in Cyrodiil as well. It is said that those who do not wield great magics and technologies can be blinded or turned insane even by witnessing or being in the presence of their great power. The Falmer are one of the wow. most tragic and shocking stories in all of the series. An entire meaning with northern and nordic and so that's the full massive tonal architecture but the problem with massive robot action the way the summer actually your people were given passage the to fuck our does that mean? and the protection of our power. that's literally written in many Hebrew. of your people have perished under the roaring could skyrim players read this like am i supposed to know this your wills were well, what's going on only by the grace of the dwemer did your race survive Shit. We did not ask for thanks, for we do not believe in it. Damn, we, we, we covered a lot. We covered a we lot today. We only request. Good thing I watched this video. Now I know the dark the side of this game. The what fruit the fuck? of the stones around us. Well, and as your vision to clouds, touch base as the darkness sets on the, in, on the majority of these not. things. Oh my no, God, it's gonna be a journey. Hope you all are up for it. affection unbinds your bones to the earth before you, and sets your final path to the music. 
of your new eternity. This tablet seems to be a record of the agreement between the Snow Elves and Dwemer, and if true, it implies that this guinea pig theory is most likely correct. It could be that these twisted experiment by the Dwemer slowly transform the Snow Elves into these demented creatures. And when the Dwemer themselves mysteriously vanished out of nowhere, these damaged and damned Snow Elves had to learn to fend for themselves deep underground, all while being blinded and alone. A truly harrowing idea that the once great race of the Snow Elves were tortured and abused so much that Oak Scrolls Iceberg in general, that consisting of all Elder Scrolls, including Skyrim V and it's um um it's absurd it's insane I'm just baffled by what I've I've watched and the story that it told me is just unbelievable it's just it's just more to it's just so much to comprehend honestly and uh, I'm glad that we touched base on this video today um Hopefully this information will help me throughout my journey while playing Skyrim V. I'm going to find some clues throughout the game. I'm going to be starting the gameplay later on today. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be making some videos tonight. Um, kind of like a late night vibe, late night Skyrim play. Episode 1. It's going to be long gameplay. Hope you all are up for it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next episode. That will be me starting off the first episode. First episode being the actual of Skyrim V. So thank you guys so much for watching again. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.